Hello and welcome to Broken Entertainment. Um, originally I was going to talk about the Hugo Awards and George R. R. Martin and how ridiculous all that is, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit, but what I really want to talk about, we're, we've gotten very good in the Phantom Menace and in Comic Skate at pointing out the problem, because it's everywhere. And it's usually really obvious. And it pisses us off. But. It's easy to point out problems. And for a while it's very important to point out problems. And we should continue. To point out and say this is wrong. But it, it needs to not be the only thing we do. And a lot of us have moved away from only doing that. And that's great. Um. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to point out what's coming, what the solutions are, and what creators and creative-minded people need to start doing. So let's take a quick look at the Hugo Awards controversy. Okay, um, this is articles on Bell of Lost Souls. I was here for something else, but it popped up, so here we are. Um, this person, the author, is uh, Mars Garrett. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Don't call me racist if it's not. Uh, he's... I think it's he. Don't call me transphobic if it's not. I'm sorry, it's not an easily gendered name. Um, kind of their resident SJW. We've seen worse. So he's talking about in this article. He's talking about George R. R. Martin gave these pre-recorded speeches for the Hugo Awards in which he mispronounced most of the winners' names and he praised John Campbell, who used to have an award named after him, but they call him a segregationist. I don't know anything about John Campbell. I'm not going to go there. Uh, and they gave a retro Hugo to... H.P. Lovecraft, who, again, they call racist and anti-Semite. Now, with H.P. Lovecraft, uh, he was both of those things, pretty obviously and very badly. Um, but that gets into the separating the art from the artist thing. On the other hand, I don't think he should get the award. I think it's time that we stop giving awards to people who aren't alive anymore and whose books were written a long time ago unless it's someone that didn't receive credit the, that they clearly deserved that's what the kind of, that's what a retro hugo award should be for hg lovecraft is not without awards he's not without recognition let it go that said Mispronouncing names is not racist. It's considered racist by these people. Um, and by these people, I don't mean people of color. I mean SJWs and SJW adjacents. It's considered that way because to them, not learning how to pronounce someone's name means you don't care enough and that you think they should anglicize their name. Sometimes people do that, and that's true. Most of the time, it is not. Most of the time, people see a name they're not culturally familiar with, and they mispronounce it. My name gets mispronounced all the damn time. I don't really care. Uh, you know... 
It hasn't bothered me in so long. I, I can't even... Half time, I don't even correct people anymore. I just don't care. If you have a culturally unfamiliar name, there's nothing wrong with it. You should be proud of your name. You should like your name. Uh, that said... I'm looking for some examples. Here we go. Here's one. Um, that said, you should also be understanding when people don't know how to pronounce it. Now, supposedly George R. R. Martin was given pronunciation guides. That's where some disrespect comes in, but it's not the kind of disrespect they think it is. These pronunciation guides were probably ignored. George R. R. Martin is in his 70s. He's a very busy person. And he's one of those very well established people in entertainment who probably at this point believe that the people they don't know and haven't heard of don't really matter that much. And he probably just said, eh. And he mispronounced it. He may, hell, he may not have even read the thing. <clears throat> I don't think it had anything to do with race. And I think it's silly to assume that it had anything to do with race. It means that you only look at things through a racial lens. Um, <coughs> that said, if you look at the people who won this award, most of them are of a certain political leaning, let's say. Uh, they're of certain skin tone or tones. And there's been a lot of accusations that the Hugo Awards are as political as the Oscars and the Emmys, which is probably true. It's disheartening as someone who wants to become an author. I would love to win a Hugo Award. I am not going to assume that's going to happen. It's hard to do. But it should be based entirely on merit. If it's not, that's a problem. But I'm not going to go much more into that. It, what it does is it serves as a highlight, a problem with our entertainment. And we're, most of us know what that problem is. Comics have been tanked by ideolo ideologues. Star Trek has been tanked by incompetence and ideologues. Star Wars has been tanked by incompetence and ideologues. Doctor Who has been absolutely annihilated by an ideologue. We're seeing franchise after franchise after franchise get destroyed to promote gender politics, identity politics, racial politics, and to virtue signal so hard it's unbelievable. So, we can point that out, and we should. It should be pointed at every time it comes up. But, there's a future coming in which entertainment is not broken, but revolutionized. And it's already starting. The groundwork has already been laid. You have increasing sales and increasing income on the side of indie comics and crowdfunding. You have large numbers of people who self-publish their novels. You have people who are beginning to create high-quality content on YouTube that is set up like a TV show or a movie. And you have the fact, perhaps most important of all, children are watching YouTube more than they're watching television. That means they 
have already turned their back largely on television and movies. Add to that the basic destruction of theaters by long-term incompetence and the current virus situation. Add to that mismanagement by companies like Disney. And you have the recipe for what's coming. It's starting with comics because comics is the easiest place to get into indie production. It's not terribly expensive, especially if you can do multiple tasks yourself. Lettering, drawing, coloring, etc. The next thing is going to be self-publishing. Now, self-publishing has been around for a while. It's very popular. There's a ton of people that do it. Most of it is not well received and most of it's not very good. But as people learn what to do, as people who just publish for the sake of it drop away and the people with drive and commitment who want to not just get a book out there, but get a book out there that people like and enjoy. And as people get tired of the process of constantly begging agents, please represent me, sell me to somebody so they publish me and then don't actually support me with any marketing and don't get me in bookstores very often. As people move away from that model and into self-publishing, you're going to have increasing drop-offs of people who self-publish just for the heck of it. And you're going to be left with a core of people, just like with comics, who are driven and motivated, who want to get their stories out there, who, if, who, who using myself as an example, have seen all of their favorite things destroyed in entertainment and are saying, you know what? I'm not going to spend any more time writing stories about those I'm gonna make my own thing and I'm gonna put it out there and I'm gonna try to make it popular and well liked because this other stuff Star Trek Doctor Who Star Wars has been destroyed let's replace it and that's what we need to do and as those of us who are aspiring to be authors get your stuff out there have total control of it and get professional copy editors and professional content editors and professional book cover designers. Do everything, and yes, it's not cheap. Do everything that a traditional publisher would do, but do it for yourself. And get it out there under your name with total control. As more people like that like me, who go to bookstores and, and look down the aisles for something, anything new, and all they see is dead person over here and dead person over there and 70-year-old author over here and books that were spun off from Magic the Gathering over there and Star Wars novels that don't matter anymore over there. As those people get pushed into it, you're, you're going to get away from the crap. And you're going to get high quality. And it's going to come out regardless of what traditional publishing has to say about it. And we're going to see the same thing with movies and television. We already had a great Star Trek series on YouTube before it got killed by CBS. Called... Star Trek continues, if that same passion was put into fan, cre er, not fan, sorry, into independently created new content, it's going to be popular because they wrote really good stories. Can you imagine if those people had said, you know what, screw CBS, I'm not going to make any more Star Trek, I'm going to make my own sci-fi space opera. with that same attention to detail and that same passion and drive. And then 
you've got other examples. Astartes for 40k. Universally praised on YouTube. Imagine if that guy said, you know what? It's fun writing for 40k. I think I need to make something of my own. It's going to happen. Right now, people are just testing the waters with this stuff for television and movies, but it's going to happen. The technology is already available to do it without the big, huge studios, without the big, huge recording equipment, without the fancy actors. The technology is there to do it entirely digitally if you want and have it look good. The more people understand that and the more they move to making their own content for the generation that's watching YouTube now more than television the less television and Hollywood are going to matter and it's going to be slow and it's not going to be a complete replacement but it's going to be an overtaking what is indie now is going to become mainstream as more and more people are pushed away from entertainment that they love. Those of them that are creative and have the drive and get pissed off, eventually that pissed off energy is going to turn into, I'm going to make something. Because I'm going to make something and I'm going to show the world that you don't have to put up with this garbage. I'm going to show the people making this garbage that they don't have a monopoly on entertainment. And they don't get to tell people what to feel and think. And they don't get to call people racists and transphobes and homophobes and misogynists and whatever words you want to invent for not following the ideological bullcrap. I'm working on a novel of my own that I'm editing right now, that I'm going to send out to beta readers, I've got more in the works that I'm making first drafts of, I want to publish. And I'm, if I have to go indie, that's what I'm going to do. Because when I go to the bookstore, I don't see new stuff. I see old stuff. And now I see big, huge sections of it that are Star Wars and Doctor Who and Star Trek, and all I can see is junk. I have ideas that I want to put out there, and I'm not alone. And the number of people that are doing that is going to go up every year. And it's going to go up more and more the more these people push their crap. Because the technology is not like it was before. Before, if you wanted to make a movie and have people watch it, you had to go to Hollywood. Now you don't have to. You make a TV show on YouTube, you go right ahead. Is it cheap? No. Is it doable? Absolutely. That's what we're looking at. That's where the future is point out where things are crap and then we say but you know what I'm going to do better and you know what if the Hugo Awards are so concerned with race and politics and gender who cares are they relevant does anyone care anymore no who cares what, who gets an Oscar and who gets an Emmy no one not really even the people that don't pay attention to this stuff don't really care that much. The ratings show that. And now you've got all these people on the ropes because of this virus. And I'm telling you, it's I don't know when, I don't know how long it's going to take, but entertainment's going to fundamentally change. And it's going to leave a lot of these people behind. So if you're a creator, or if you're just a creative person, and you have an idea and you see all this stuff being destroyed that you love, then you know what? 
Leave it behind. Do your own thing. I I was gonna rewrite uh, the Last Jedi for my friends to try uh, script edit, script writing just just for fun. And then I thought about it. I'm like, you know, I can put all that energy into my own stuff. Why put the energy into something that's that's dying when I could put it into something new, something that I created, something that I have passion for. So, if you're out there and that's and you're tired of seeing this stuff, the next step is to either create your something yourself or to support the people who do. But that's all for today. If you liked the video, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you next time.